In this video, I want to show you the important difference between remember with a key parameter and derive the state of API as well. Because if you don't uh, properly understand the main difference between these two, then you might uh, end up with uh, lots of uh, unnecessary recompositions in your UI, and that might lead to a poor UI performance. So unlike the remember with the key that uh, re-executes uh, its uh, block whenever the key changes, a derived uh, state of, uh, on the other hand, creates a uh, computed state that uh, only recalculates when uh, one of the state values it depends on changes, and otherwise returns the cached value without re-executing its block. The important part about derived state of is that uh, cached word, right? But nonetheless, based on their definition, you might say that uh, they are the same. And you are partially correct, but not entirely. So in this example right here, we are using uh, that remember with a key. And the second example here is a derived state of. So uh, both of these uh, text fields uh, will change the state of this uh, is valid boolean value to uh, true if we add at least uh, four characters, right? So as you can see here, when I type one, two, three, and then four, this one will be re-executed and uh, triggered to change the state. So the same goes with this remember with the key, right? So whenever we type one, two, three, and then a four, this state will also change. So there is no difference between them at all, right? And in our code, uh, I'm here using the side effect, which basically triggers on each recomposition. So whenever a recomposition here occurs, we're gonna see a value that says derived recomposed. And that same applies with this remember uh, example as well. So remember recomposed. Now let's open up the locket. And again, I'm going to try here uh, typing some characters like one, two, three, four. As you can see, whenever we type the character, the log will be executed. The same goes with the derived state as well. So in this example, they are practically identical. However, in this uh, second example that I have prepared for you, you're going to actually see the main difference between these two APIs. So in this example, we are now using a lazy column, right? So a lazy column with uh, 100 uh, text elements uh, to scroll, right? So this uh, remember basically uh, specified the first visible items index as a key. So this first visible item index is referring to the first uh, element which is visible inside the list. And once we scroll through that uh, list of uh, 100 elements, that value will be changed uh, quite a lot, right? Multiple times per second, right? Depends on uh, how fast we scroll through our list. And down below we have also that uh, same example with the same lazy column. So we are also using uh, 100 uh, items in here. And instead of using remember with a key, we're using derived state of. And in both of these examples, we are uh, increasing this recomposition count to track how many times our composable has recomposed. So here we have uh, two examples, right? So two lazy columns with uh, 100 uh, items in uh, each one of them. This example on the left uses remember with a key parameter, while this one uses derived state of. Now, as soon as we scroll through uh, this uh, first uh, list, you can see that the recomposition count will uh, increase drastically, right? So as you can see, uh, basically, we are triggering it uh, multiple times. So whenever this uh, first uh, visible item index changes, and it will be changed uh, whenever we uh, scroll through our list uh, multiple times, then this uh, block will be re-executed. And then based on that uh, value, we're going to display here uh, this uh, up button. However, with this derived state of, recomposition count is only two in this case. As you can see, we can scroll as many times we need and the recomposition will not increase. Because the great thing about derived state of is that it will cache the value. So if this first visible item index is greater than zero, so no matter if that index is 1, 2, 3, 10 or 100, it will not be recalculated all over again, since the important part here is that that value is indeed greater than zero. Okay, and only after we go all the way back, only then uh, that recomposition will increase by one, right? So in that case, uh, this uh, first visible item index uh, is no longer greater than zero, in which case it recomposed once again. And that's the main difference between a derived state of and remember with a key parameter. So this is an example where the derived state of uh, shines over a uh, remember with a key parameter. Also, if you try to use uh, these kind of uh, values that are uh, changing uh, quite uh, drastically 
uh, in the recomposition and you use this value in the remember with the key parameter, uh, Compose compiler will inform you that uh, you should basically use the derived state of instead. Uh, this was not available in the previous Compose versions, however, they have now included this uh, new uh, frequently changing value annotation. And if you are building your own uh, kind of library and you have some kind of a value that also changes drastically uh, in your UI, then you should also annotate that uh, uh, variable with this uh, frequently changing value. Because this annotation will inform our Kotlin compiler and we are going to receive here uh, that uh, kind of a compile time warning as well. In which case, of course, uh, we can modify this uh, whole calculation and use the right state of instead. So there we go. Uh, that was the main difference between uh, these two Compose APIs. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you have uh, any questions about uh, uh, these two. And of course, don't forget to leave a like to this video, but uh, only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.